Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking into the Tesla's infotainment system before the big new update rolls out to Tesla Model 3s. And let's take a look at what makes this Tesla infotainment system so special. First off, I have to say, I really like the current interface. It's user friendly and very functional. However, I've heard the new update is going to be incredibly futuristic, which is the coolest thing about owning a Tesla. Each update makes the car feel new. So recently Tesla added this new feature of search, which is quite handy and you can literally search any settings which you want to go from here. Let's look at the control center. In the controls menu, you'll find quick actions for things like adjusting the lights, folding mirrors, and unlocking child doors, all from convenience of the screen. Plus you can secure your glove box with a lock code. And this just allows you extra security when it comes to storing stuff in the glove box. The next bit is controlling the wipers. I usually keep my wipers on auto. There have been reports of issues with these settings. For me, it's worked fine. And if not, you can always change the settings depending on your needs. Now the controls menu also allows you to adjust your steering as well as mirrors. This is quite intuitive once you get uh, used to it. And uh, the best part about this is like every setting of the mirrors and steering is saved to your profile. So you don't have to do it multiple times. You set it once, you save it to your profile, as you can see down there, and you would be able to just restore it whenever you need to store the settings back to your default settings, which are saved to your profile, which is great. Same goes with steering. Just by moving the stock up and down the steering moves as shown there which is quite intuitive and good the next bit is recording this is the dash cam footage which means you can click on this button to save the last 10 minutes of the recording from throughout uh, the car's cameras and this is sentry mode so you can turn the sentry mode on and off from this button from this menu the last one is the brightness of the screen so you would be able to switch it manually if you want to i keep it on auto works fine for me the other option that you have on this screen is an option to see a bluetooth icon which means your car does have a working bluetooth and what the car is connected to lte shows that the current connection is catching the lte signal and any notification that you have and this is i think common with every screen so control center is designed to actually uh, allow you to quick access multiple settings which you uh, most often use and the next bit is pedals and charging so these are my current settings and depending on who's driving with me in the car i adjust the acceleration if someone else is in the car i usually keep it on chill which just makes the car drive a bit more smoothly and otherwise i just keep it on standard and steering mode i keep it on standard and that's been fine for me but if you want a lighter feeling steering wheel you can always do comfort otherwise you can do sport if you want a heavier feel of the steering wheel and a stopping mode i keep it on hold which allows you to use the one pedal driving which is one of the best features of tesla if you ask me because that allows you to just uh, drive using just the acceleration pedal and that's quite a, an amazing thing and uh, once you get used to it it's quite handy slip start is something which you can use if you are stuck in snow sand or mud luckily or unfortunately i haven't had a opportunity to go in snow or a environment where i got stuck so i haven't used it yet but i'm sure that's what it's designed for the next bit is charging the charging menu shows your current state of charge and lets you set a max charge rate as well so assuming you want to charge your car to full you keep it here and this is a lfp battery which means we uh, also get a warning saying we recommend keeping your charge limit at 100 and charging once uh, per week to full which is the reason i keep it to full and the degradation of the car have been quite linear and it's not much uh, i've lost maybe 20 kilometers of range in first two uh, years of ownership so which is uh, quite good and apart from that you have an option to open the charge port from here you can schedule uh, charging time so as you can see if you want to uh, charge your car at a off peak hour or if you want to set a timer that you know start the charging at 6 a.m when the sun is out and you want to use your solar that's the way to do it and other thing that this screen does have is some supercharging tips which are quite handy if you use superchargers uh, 
oftenly, which I don't. This is quite useful if you are looking for a supercharger. It also shows how much we paid for the last supercharging session we had, which is $2. Next bit is autopilot. I have auto steer enabled and use the double pull for better cruise control management. The set speed aligns with the detected speed limit and I keep the offset at zero. For speed limit warnings, I prefer just a digital notification without any chimes because that seems to work for me. Safety is a key and I keep forward collision warning on medium and lane departure avoidance on assist, emergency lane departure avoidance is on which is crucial for unexpected lane drifts along with the other things I've kept uh, on the obstacle away acceleration which allows the car to accelerate or brake if needed uh, just to avoid any obstacle or collision. The other thing is a traffic aware cruise control chime. I believe this is when you switch on the traffic aware cruise control, it gives you a tone or a different notification which allows you to understand that the system's engaged. And the last one is green traffic light chime, which means whenever you stopped at a red light and if the light turns green, your car will let you know that you know the car's uh, meant to be moving. The next bit is the locks. In the lock menu, you can add keys, enable walk away to door lock and manage child locks. And I like walk away door lock, which allows you to just walk away with your car key in your pocket or your phone in your pocket and the car locks itself. I do have the lock confirmation sound as well as I enable the close window on lock option, which makes the windows go up and roll up if you forgot to do them. As soon as the car locks, the windows turn off as well. The next section is lights. The slide section has main option of auto high beam and headlights after exit, which allows the car lights to be on after you exit the vehicle, which is helpful for navigating to your door if you parked in a dark driveway. Dome lights, I keep it on auto most of the times, but if you're sitting in the car and as soon as you park, dome lights can turn on and you might want to turn them off manually so you can do it from here. Steering wheel lights is must redundant uh, light that I've seen ever on any vehicle but this is still here which is uh, I think welcome addition because there's no other lights apart from this one in the entire Tesla interior especially on the base model. The next bit is display settings. The display settings are on auto but you can customize them on your preference. I keep the appearance on display settings on auto which means as soon as it's uh, dark outside the car detects it and it turns your dark mode on and vice versa. Uh, you can choose an option to reduce the blue light blur which I don't like because it just dulls the screen a bit and I don't drive my car enough or look at the screen enough for me to turn that on but if you want to you can do that. The brightness of the screen can be controlled from here as well as, as we saw there's an option to do it in controls as well. The next bit is automatic blind spot cameras, which is like as soon as you turn your indicators, you would see a camera feed, which is one of the most welcome changes I've seen after I own the car. It was added via a software update. Screen clean mode allows you to turn on a black screen where you would be able to see that, you know, how many marks and spudges you have, which apparently I do have a lot and uh, it just allows you to clean it. Now this is a new option which was added as well, scroll wheel function which means if you click, keep holding this button and it allows you to scroll through multiple options without actually touching the screen. But I like to keep my option on acceleration mode because that's the one which I use the most. Now I've kept the language as well as voice recognition as English and these options allow how you want to see your text as well as the time format the energy consumption you can do it from here or just by clicking on here you can switch those options as well same goes with the kilometers and miles you can switch the temperature of between degree celsius and degree fahrenheit from here as well tire pressure and that's it for this menu the next option is trip where it shows your trip meter you can actually see here an option which says shows and trip card which is right here so as you can see you would be able to see current trip as well as since charge here but if you want to add another one you have to disable this and you can do that and you can add up to four cards on this quick menu as you can see i've been getting average of 127 watt per kilometer which is quite good considering that the tesla 
official claim is 136 watt hour per kilometer. Navigation system now includes options to avoid tolls and ferries and it offers a trip planner that suggests routes based on the real time traffic. The next is safety and security. Sentry mode dash cam features and live camera view via mobile app are one of the best features of Tesla's robust security suit. I use dash cam autosave with on honk uh, option enabled that allows me to capture critical moments if something happens near me you just honk and uh, the 10 minute clip is saved you have an option to delete dash cams format usb drive if you need to and other options include automatic blind spot cameras blind spot collision warning chime allow mobile access which means you would be able to see the cameras through here pin to drive this is another security features which allows you to put a pin on your uh, Tesla's driving mode, which means as soon as you turn on the Tesla and uh, turn on the gears, it asks for a pin before it allows you to drive, which is quite cool and uh, quite a good safety feature. Now, speed limit mode is something which you can use to limit the speed to uh, the maximum speed that the car can achieve if you've turned it on. The next bit is cabin overheat protection, which is quite a good feature. If you turn it on, it would allow your car to switch on the air con if the temperature exceeds a certain limit, which allows your interior of the car to be protected. The next thing or options we have is security alarm, park, assist chimes, gear chimes, and jaw mode. All these are chimes to let you know what the action have been performed, but jaw mode is something which I've turned on, which allows your car to reduce the volume of the chimes and it just allows you to uh, be a bit discreet and especially if you have kids in the back that's why uh, we turn it on the other thing is this option of safety allows you to switch off the car and the next bit is service where you would be able to see the car tire pressure as well as have access to owner manual the owner manual will allow you to see and browse information about each and every aspect of the car and this screen is also used for one more thing which is quite handy which is the cleaning mode so if you put your car in a car wash you can uh, put the car wash mode on from here which allows your car to lock down the doors and make sure the charging port is closed as well which is quite good the other thing is this wiper service mode the wiper service mode allows the car wiper to go up and it allows you to then do the servicing of those wipers or just clean them in journal and you can factory reset your car from here as well there are other things which is calibration of your lights which is i believe something which should be done by a trained professional for example if you do this headlight adjust you would be able to see a warning saying headlights should only be adjusted by a trained service technician but I believe this just allows us to go through the menu of service. It doesn't allow us to book a service from here, but it gives you an option to see the tire pressure, the mileage on the tires and get that sort of information. The next bit is quite important, which is the software update. Finally, the software menu is where you get updates. I keep my option for software update preference as advanced because that allows me to get the updates as soon as they're available for the car and the uh, next bit here is uh, data sharing and cabin camera which you have an option to choose it on and off and data sharing uh, i've shared my autopilot analytics and improvements but uh, not where when i start or stop uh, my car or allow cabin camera analytics that's preference of allowing what uh, tesla can have access to the next bit is Wi-Fi, you would be able to choose a Wi-Fi and connect your Wi-Fi from here. That's just the way to connect your car to Wi-Fi. Even if you don't have premium connectivity, you would be able to use your phone's Wi-Fi to stream, let's say YouTube or Netflix, anywhere you are. And the next last two options are Bluetooth, which allows your car to be paired to your phone for music services and other things. And the last is upgrade section which currently only shows me to be able to get premium connectivity subscription and i'm not too sure why it says wipe to subscribe i already have it for the year i think it should be grayed out or taken off if you already have premium connectivity thanks for tuning in if you enjoyed this overview please like and subscribe for more tesla content drive safe and i'll see you in the next one